The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went into the hills to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. When day came, he summoned his disciples and picked out twelve of them. He called them apostles. Simon, whom he called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He then came down with them and stopped at a piece of level ground, where there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. People tormented by unclean spirits were also cured, and everyone in the crowd was trying to touch him because power came out of him that cured them all. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away all our sins. Now the red vestments today, Simon and Jude, two of the apostles, Simon the Zealot, as we hear from the Gospel there, and Jude the son of James, and Jude, as we know, the patron saint of hopeless cases. Uh, don't know exactly why that might be, but um, at any rate, uh, Many people have great recourse to him. So the apostles are the foundation stones, if you like, or the pillars of the church. Maybe you might look upon Christ as the foundation, or sometimes Christ himself as the keystone, or the cornerstone is the image that's used. And each of the apostles, uh, and we too, of course, and their successors and, and so on, making the church or the building of, of God's house. But not just bricks and mortar, not just limestone or sandstone native to our own shores here, uh, granite, all these um, geological rocks that are used, marble features strongly, of course, in our cathedrals and churches too, but rather living stones. So the, the kingdom of God and the, and the life of the church is something alive and active, something that's very living, something very real and very uh, visceral. And that's where the idea of martyrdom teaches us what it means to be a living member of God's family, that we are called to bear witness. That's what that Greek word means, to be a witness to Christ. And the way we live our faith, the way we uh, love God and show our love for one another is what qualifies the level of that witness and uh, the quality of that aliveness, you might say, in the house of God. And so we're called to imitate the apostles, to follow them. Ours might not be the lot of laying down our life in a very graphic way, perhaps, as they did, but in so many small ways, and nowadays, indeed, with so many challenges facing us in relation to our faith, in relation to secular and humanist opposition that uh, is all around us, and also in relation to the challenges that uh, the virus in here in our own country presents to us, uh, we have been prevented from celebrating Holy Mass together, which is what brings me to the, the camera here, which isn't my usual pose. I'd be more naturally disposed with the congregation around me in full. Uh, but nonetheless, we're using the means at our disposal in the same way to bear witness to the faith. And who knows, and it seems to be the case, we've been chatting with various priests on the radio here and telling us that many more people are tuning in via webcams at, uh, in parishes here in Ireland than the church could even possibly contain at times. So maybe it is we're able to reach a wider audience and my hope is that by uh, standing in front of the camera here this would have a, a wider reach perhaps too when people can listen back at their own time and their own leisure and allow God's word to touch and to reach them. Because St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians that we've been listening to on our weekday masses as well at this time of year echoes for us very nicely too that we are no longer aliens or foreign visitors. We are citizens like all the saints and part of God's household. And appropriate that we're coming up on the feast day of all saints on the 1st of November. 
that all of us are called to that level of sanctity, of heroic virtue. We've had the declaration of Carlo Acutis, a young 15-year-old man in Italy declared blessed very recently. And if he too, with his great love for technology and the website he put together by way of teaching us about all the miracles of the Eucharist, which I remember using in school some years ago as well, ever before I heard of him properly, or ever before he's now being reached the altars as a blessed. Um, if that's possible for a, a millennial, as they describe young people born, you know, around the year 2000, um, surely then sanctity is open to us all, one and all alike. And uh, we know that those of us who are very much involved in the Legion of Mary, certainly anyone involved in the work of Radio Maria, uh, you come in here with your sleeves rolled up and there's work to be done and ministry to be done, each bringing their own gifts and talents to bear on that. So as a structure then, St. Paul says, we're aligned on Christ, growing into one holy temple in the Lord. And he says, you too, that means you and I in Christ are being built into a house where God lives. So let us not feel confined in the situation we find ourselves in being unable to gain access to our churches for Holy Mass. We can certainly go and visit and pray there. Uh, let us not see it solely as just the physical building. Let's allow our faith maybe to deepen and uh, strengthen in other ways now. That we have ways of reaching out and being a community that we would never have considered or thought about before. And ways of witnessing that are new altogether for us and challenging in their own right, but perhaps a way of reaching far greater numbers. Who knows but if this is not a blessing from the Lord to help us break out of our normal little cycle of faith and practice and to see beyond, to see further, to see how it is we can reach even the ends of the earth. And so what a great gift we have received in our faith. Look at the uh, ancestry that we enjoy in the great apostles and saints that have gone before us and help us too, may we too rather, uh, play our part and take our place among the ranks of today's saints and to bear witness to Christ in the same way to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm.